go ahead and get started with our post-race press conference. We're now joined by Brad Keselowski, driver the number two, Worth Ford, finished runner-up in today's AAA Texas 500. Um, it's tied the career best finish for Brad at Texas Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Uh, you led 312 laps. Um, you're now sixth in the chase. Just talk about those last laps as Jimmy as Jimmy made that, that move up to the front. Uh, yeah, it was a good race at the end, and, uh, you know, we led a lot of laps, a lot to be proud of, and uh, came up uh, one spot short, which is uh, unfortunate, but uh, still uh, we had a great day. Just one step short of uh, having the uh, awesome day we needed to have, but uh, and we know we know if we keep running like we have the last two weeks, that uh, you know we'll win races, and uh, you know we we need to win the next two. And I understand that, but uh, I think we have a great opportunity to do it as well. Okay, good. Open up, open up for questions. If you could raise your hand, we'll start with Stan, and then we'll go to Drew. Brad Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. <clears throat> you look strong up until the very final pit stop did you all make any major changes at, at that final pit stop or uh, you know i'm not sure i have to ask my crew chief on that but uh yeah we, we had a great day and uh, i thought we were definitely the fastest till that run for sure okay let's go over here to drew and then we'll go to nate and bob brad drew davison the fourth star telegram uh, obviously there's clear disappointment but and I know it's still fresh, but do you think you could have done anything different to hold off Jimmy, or was he just too fast? Oh, I'm sure we could have done something different. I don't know if I could have, but we could have. We just we'll have to go go to work and try and figure it out. Go over here to Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. The way the points are situated now for you and, and Joey, it, it's pretty much one or the other, it looks like, at Phoenix. Is that going to make it tougher? Does that make this harder to swallow that oh. if you win this, <laughs> it gets in? Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't really had enough time to, to look at that to digest it, Nate. Um, you know, certainly we'd like to get both cars in at Phoenix. And uh, I don't think that's impossible, but it, it doesn't look favorable. But uh, we'll go there and do our best to make it happen. Bob. Uh, Bob Hawkers, the ESPN. Um, considering what's happened over the last three weeks, what was your kind of philosophy as far as how much contact you could <laughs> have with people in those last um, few laps? I didn't feel like I changed any philosophy concerning the last few weeks. I, I felt like it was pretty clear before and, and remains clear that, you know, you can race hard for a win and, and make contact that's, you know, reasonable and uh, kind of prudent for the situation. And I don't feel like that's uh, that's changed. Uh, Pat Ticola, NASCAR.com, where you were so dominant most of today. If you are able to advance the homestead, do you feel good about that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, as strong as we ran today, if we can carry that over to homestead, good Lord, watch out. So, you know, we know we need to win the next two to win the championship. The, the, the good news is is we have that opportunity, um, and that's, uh, that's the way I look at it. Let's go Mike, and then we'll go back to Bob. Mike Kimber, USA Today. You in the 78? Barely touched there when you were racing late, and did that have any impact on the rest of the race at all for you? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it certainly is never helpful when you make contact with another car to your own car or theirs. Um, as far as whether it hurt my car or not, I, I, I couldn't answer that. Let's go back to Bob, and then we'll go up to the press box. Uh, Bob Hawker, ESPN. I mean, do you feel like you've you kind of lost this one that you let it slip away, and just what's the? I mean. Yeah, I'm not five, sure. Five, five. Not sure exactly how to feel about it uh, at the moment. Uh, the 48 car had so much speed them last 10 laps that, um, you know, as I sit right now, and maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know what I would have done differently, or could have done differently. So, so that, I mean, does that change maybe your level of disappointment? Uh, certainly, yeah. I mean, when uh, there's always something you can do better, but not knowing what that might be at this moment makes it a little bit easier to digest. Let's go up to the press box. Uh, Wolfgang Monzer from Germany, Ranchport Press Agency. Brad, two questions for you. Number one, when your teammate Joe Logano had this tire problem very early in the race, you were maybe getting nervous or afraid maybe similar things could happen to you. And sure. Did, and did you also speak to you, your colleagues from the 22 car? What exactly caused the tire problem? Well, the second question I would defer to Paul because I didn't speak with anyone on the 22 team about it. Uh, I haven't had an opportunity. But uh, the first one, certainly, um, you know, when you see your teammate have an issue, and not just my teammate, it sounded like there was three or four other cars that had an issue. Um, you, you know the faster you go, the 
uh, higher the odds are that you're going to have that problem as well. So uh, it certainly was on our mind all day, Wolfgang. Let's come back down here. Stu Myrick, Austin Radio Network and 104.9 The Horn. Uh, kind of going on that, it looked like you had a pretty clean race as far as no tire issues. Pit, pit stops were pretty clean with the exception of that last one. Uh, talk about how proud you are of, of your crew. Got you almost to the end. Yeah, we had a, a damn near flawless day. Great pit stops, fast car in qualifying. Never ran a lap in race trim and the car was just flying in the race. Um, so. You know, my team, I, I feel like, did an excellent job all day long and has a, a ton to be proud of. Any additional questions? Brad, thank you very much. Thanks, guys.